Welcome to Teaching Reading Strategies, Training Module 4, Reading Fluency and Reading Comprehension. The purpose of this training module is to equip you to teach reading fluency remediation and comprehension strategies to help your students become skillful and independent readers. Increased fluency rate and accuracy are highly correlated with increased reading comprehension. With a solid foundation in the alphabetic code, key sight words, and syllable rules, students can increase their fluency levels by practicing repeated choral readings along with modeled readings at their appropriate challenge levels. The Teaching Reading Strategies program includes two instructional options for fluency practice, small group choral readings and YouTube modeled reading videos. These 15-minute sessions are allotted for fluency practice beginning in week 3 for the half-year intensive program and week 14 for the full-year program. Let's learn how to administer the PETS fluency assessment to determine the optimal reading fluency remediation for all of your students. The PETS fluency assessment is the only assessment in the Teaching Reading Strategies program that needs to be administered individually. All other assessments are whole class. As a critical component of reading diagnosis, teachers need to hear their students read. This assessment allows the teacher to assess reading ability and provides a baseline fluency rate. Additionally, the results will help the teacher narrow down the reading level of students to inform selections of books for independent reading practice. The PETS fluency passage is leveled in a unique pyramid design. Of the seven paragraphs, the first paragraph is at that first grade reading level, the second at the second grade reading level, the third at the third, fourth, fourth, fifth, fifth, sixth, sixth, and the seventh paragraph is at the seventh grade reading level. Thus, the reader begins the assessment at an easier level, which builds confidence and then moves to more difficult academic language through successive approximation. As the student reads the fluency passage, the teacher will be able to note the reading levels at which students have a high degree of accuracy and automaticity. Automaticity refers to the ability of the reader to read effortlessly without stumbling or sounding out words. To prepare for the PETS fluency assessment, laminate one copy of the PETS fluency assessment for students. Run off enough of the teacher copies of the same assessment for each of your students and a few more for possible transfer students. Use a stopwatch to ensure that the two-minute timings will be accurate. Set aside a table or two desks in the corner of the room or just outside the door if practical. Have desks or chairs facing each other. The teacher may give the fluencies individually or have a trained instructional aide or even a parent or partner to assist in the fluency assessments. Giving the fluency assessments is not rocket science. Any trained adult can assist. Announce to the class that you will have students quietly read to you for a two-minute reading fluency. Say, please don't interrupt the fluency timings unless there's an emergency. We want to complete these timings quickly, so this is how we will organize things. I will pick one student to read. The first one to read will be Johnny. Please sit here. Now when Johnny is finished, he will use the stopwatch to time the next reader, who will be Susie. From now on, the student who does the timing will quietly go get the next reader. Any questions? Here's your script to administer the PETS fluency assessment. Number one, say, I'm going to have you read out loud for two minutes. Read quickly, but say the words correctly. The title of this article is PETS. Point to the first word of the article on the student's copy and say, Ready? Begin! Number two. As the student reads, mark a slash on the teacher's copy for mispronounced words, omitted words, added words, and words not correctly pronounced within three seconds. If say the word for the student after three seconds of silence or attempted pronunciation, and then say next if the student does not continue to read. Be consistent in test administration regarding marking or not marking dialect differences, word repetitions, pre-practice of difficult words, reversals, and self-corrections. Number three, 
Mark a bracket after the last word the student reads correctly when two minutes have elapsed. Say stop. Record the total number of words read, less errors, at the bottom left of the page, and the name of the student. Say thank you. Now you will be the timer. When I say begin, push this button. After two minutes, say stop, and push the button again. After the timing has been completed, say, please go tell Susie that she is on deck. Once the assessments have been completed, the total number of words should be recorded in the Fluency Words pretest column on the Phonemic Awareness, Phonics, Sight Words, and Fluency Mastery Matrix for each student for use as the diagnostic baseline. Use the results of the PETS Fluency Assessment to assign one of three fluency level groups, levels A, B, or C, to each of your students. Each assigned level will have faster modeled readings to push students to read more quickly and more accurately. Keep these groups flexible as some students will progress rapidly and may need to be reassigned to reflect their improved reading fluency scores. Also separate students who do not work well together. The Teaching Reading Strategies Animal Fluency articles are high interest expository passages designed for remedial readers. Each of the 43 articles has 350 to 450 words and focuses on one of the animals featured on the animal sound spelling cards. Readers learn about the physical characteristics of the animal, the animal's habitat, what the animal eats, the animal's family, interesting facts, and the status of the species, whether endangered or not. The articles are leveled in a three-tiered pyramid design. The first two paragraphs are at an adjusted third grade reading level. After deleting a few key multisyllabic words such as carnivores or long animal names such as armadillos. The next two paragraphs are at the fifth grade reading level and the last two are at the seventh grade reading level. The reader begins practice at an easier level to build confidence and then moves on to more difficult academic language and sentence length. The print copies of the Animal Fluency articles include bold-faced challenge words in the upper right corner for the teacher to pre-teach. Word counts are provided in the left margin for fluency timings. Here's how to set up effective and efficient fluency remediation for both small group and YouTube modeled readings. Number one, print enough Animal Fluency articles and the paired script comprehension worksheets back to back for each of your students. Place these in Fluency Leader folders for each fluency group. Number two, appoint a fluency leader for each of your fluency groups. If a fluency group is larger than eight students, subdivide the group and appoint a second fluency leader. Periodically rotate fluency leaders. Number three, Label individual student folders to keep the fluency articles and timing charts. Number four, provide a box of cold and hot color pencils and erasers for each fluency group. Many teachers use blue pencils to record cold fluency timings and red pencils for hot fluency timings. Number five, if using the YouTube modeled readings, Provide earbuds and assign computers for each student and post the login directions on a classroom wall poster for reference. Number six, locate a timer. Keep the display private so that students won't watch the timer during the reading. The stopwatch app on your phone works just fine. Number seven, tell students that they will practice reading the same article over and over again to improve their fluency levels. Tell them that they will be reading out loud with six inch voices, but not in front of the class. Display the pet's fluency and model how to read with six inch voices. Read with good expression and pay attention to details. Pause at commas and stop at periods. Have students practice their reading from the display. Remind them not to shout but not to whisper as they read. Number eight, display the pet's fluency 
and explain how to count the words for a fluency timing. Number nine, display the animal fluency passage timing chart and model how to shade in the cold and hot timings. Tell students that a cold timing is an unpracticed reading and a hot timing is a practiced reading and is recorded above the cold timing because the practiced reading timing is usually higher than the unpracticed reading timing. Tell students to be neat, but not to take more than 30 seconds to shade in their timings. And number 10, assign students to their fluency groups. Tell them that the groups are based on their pet's fluency assessment scores, but that you will change their groups as needed. Here are the day one and day three instructional procedures. For both the small group and YouTube modeled readings and fluency practice options. Tell students to move desks or tables and chairs quickly to form their fluency groups as shown on the display or board. Provide participation points or incentives for quick, quiet, and cooperative transitions. Direct fluency leaders to pass out the assigned animal fluency article from their fluency leader folders face down to each student in their groups. The fluency leaders also should pass out the individual student folders and cold color pencils and erasers. Say, we are now going to read an article about an animal. Each of you will read out loud with good expression at your own pace. Make sure to pause at any commas and stop at all periods. I will be timing your readings for two minutes. During the timing, don't stop reading because we want our timings to be accurate. If you stumble on a word, sound it out and then move on quickly. Now turn the article over and let's begin to read. Please point to the first bold-faced word in the upper right-hand corner of the article and repeat each word after me. Take time to pre-teach the pronunciation of each of the bold-faced challenge words. Have students repeat the words back after you say them out loud. Now point to the first word of the fluency passage. Ready? Read. The students continue to read the article out loud for the two-minute cold timing. Monitor the reading and adjust reading volume as necessary for individual students, saying louder, softer. After two minutes, say stop. Now use your pencil to record your cold timing on your animal fluency timing chart. Be neat, but take no more than 30 seconds to shade in your cold timing. When you're finished, place the article and timing sheet back in your folder and hand the folder, pencil, and eraser to your fluency leader. By the way, note that two-minute fluency timings, rather than the traditional one-minute timings, more accurately assess student progress. Students also access more challenging reading levels within the same timing on the reading fluency articles. Teachers are provided two options on day one and three to remediate reading fluency with modeled and repeated readings. The first option, after the cold timing, is the small group choral reading option. If you choose this option, tell students that they will chorally read the article once led by their fluency leaders. Direct the fluency leader to stand up and read at a quick pace with a slightly louder volume than the six inch voices of the rest of the fluency group. When finished reading the article, students are to individually reread the passage out loud as fast as they feel comfortable until the teacher says stop. The second option for reading fluency remediation is to use the YouTube modeled readings. Direct fluency leaders to pass out earbuds and computers to each student in their groups. Say, log in and open to your assigned level animal fluency article video. Read out loud with the modeled reading over and over again until I say stop. Read with six inch voices, don't shout, but don't whisper. Read with good expression, just like the modeled reading. At the end of the session, tell students to log off. Direct the fluency leader to collect earbuds, materials, and student folders. While the fluency leaders collect materials, the group should reorganize the desks and or tables. For days two and four, 
instructional procedures, they are roughly the same, direct fluency leaders to pass out individual student folders, the hot colored pencils, erasers, earbuds, and computers. Repeat the day one and day three small group or YouTube procedures for the modeled repeated readings practice. Save time for the hot timing at the end of the session. Here are the procedures for the hot timing. Follow the same directions as with the cold timings. After the two minute timing, say stop. Now use your pencil to record your hot timing on top of the cold timing on your animal fluency timing chart. Be neat, but take no more than 30 seconds to shade in your hot timing. If you read fewer words on this hot timing than you did on your cold timing, simply draw a line to show your hot timing. Direct fluency leaders to collect all materials while the groups reorganize the desks and or tables. Teaching Reading Strategies uses the five script comprehension strategies to teach readers how to interactively read both narrative and expository text. The script acronym stands for Summarize, Connect, Rethink, Interpret, and Predict. All five script strategies are reinforced on each of the 43 script comprehension worksheets, as well as in the Sam and Friends Phonics books. The worksheets include the same text as the animal reading fluencies. Instead of word counts and bold-faced challenge words, the script comprehension worksheets each have five questions, one question for each of the five strategies. The questions are placed in the right-hand margin and require students to interact with the article. Students answer the questions in the margins. The Teaching Reading Strategies program introduces the script comprehension strategies in the first week for the half-year intensive program and in the 14th week for the full-year program. Before using the worksheets, explain and model the five script strategies. Emphasize one strategy at a time, referencing the script comprehension strategies posters, which appear at the end of the appendix. Use these narrative models. Summarize uses The Boy Who Cried Wolf. Connect uses Hansel and Gretel. Rethink uses Little Red Riding Hood. Interpret uses Goldilocks and the Three Bears. And Predict uses the Three Little Pigs. Start with the summarize strategy and do a think aloud on the narrative, The Boy Who Cried Wolf. An effective think aloud involves reading the passage out loud and pausing frequently to interact with the text. Limit your interactions to the focus comprehension strategy. Continue to teach the remaining four strategies in the same manner. See the answer key for possible answers for each of the five narrative passages. Besides the script comprehension strategy questions, each worksheet requires students to define three embedded vocabulary words. The vocabulary words are bold-faced on each worksheet. Students are to define each word and write original context clue sentences to show the meaning of each of the three words on the back of their worksheets using the S-A-L-E SALE context clue strategies. Pre-teach these synonym, antonym, logic, and example strategies and practice the context clue worksheets before beginning the script comprehension worksheets. Your students will benefit from the fluency, comprehension, and vocabulary instruction found in the Teaching Reading Strategies program.